Hello everyone, welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video, and today is a video where we're going to be a tutorial on how to build the Virgin Galactic Spaceship 2 and EVE Carrier Aircraft Mothership thing. So, very epic. So, start by following what I'm doing right here. Um, you basically need to grab some fuel tanks, grab an adapter piece, get it upside down, then grab some engine, cheetah engines. Um, I should quickly say, uh, both DLCs are required for this build, so you want to have those on hand. Um, we are going to be showing how to do... Um, like I said, both the space plane and then the mothership, and we're also gonna have like the little, like the rotating wing, and we'll, I'll do a little uh, a little flight tutorial and at the end to kind of show you how to do like the little kind of like flop thing it does and then transition. It's really cool, and then the the drop. It's up. It's epic, right? So, um, gonna grab some wings. So grab a, uh, a swept wing, and then want to rotate it just a little bit, and then you want to move it so that the um, the beginning of the wing is just right behind that front cockpit piece. And then you want to go ahead, grab another little wing piece there to kind of square it off there. Um, and then you, want, you don't want to have any angle on the backmost bit of the wing like so. And then that is basically the main wing structure. That is the non-moving bit of the wing done, and that's the easy bit. And now you want to go ahead, and this is part where you need breaking ground. Um, so you want to go ahead, grab a hinge, a big old hinge, and then you want to put some aerodynamics on said hinge, like so. Now you may have to fiddle around a little bit with the shape of the wing just so you can get the um, the wing piece there to fit kind of kind of snug on the uh, on the thing. You, don't, you obviously don't want a big piece of the hinge showing. That's obviously that's a bad, isn't it? Um, so you can move it up and down a little bit. If you move it up, that'll help things a little bit too with the wing, as you'll see I do probably here in just a second or two um, to get the thing lined up properly. But uh, this isn't too hard of a build uh, to do uh, if you want to follow along. If you're just watching this entertainment, then uh, I don't know. Thank, thank you for watching. Hopefully, hopefully you like my recreation of this thing. There's some people who made some really nuts recreations of the uh, of Virgin Galactic, but you know, that seems like a little insane to do with a tutorial. This is like a you know accessible tutorial. Also, I really don't know if I could even do that. So now is the bit where we do the, the turny bit. So this is the bit of the wing that actually will move. So you have to add a wing stake, or straight rather, and then you want to add these little two wing bits to the back. You want these to be rotated ever so slightly. Um, like, so you want the front one to be rotated a little bit up and the back one rotated a little bit down. So now they're going to add like little vertical stabilizer on the back. A good rule of thumb is you want basically the vertical stabilizer to start um, right at the end of the engine bell. So that's kind of a good kind of frame of reference there. You want to just add a uh, horizontal stabilizer there. Um, using the tail fin kind of straighten that out and then we will add a uh, another one right there and you don't need those to be moving. What I'd like to quickly say if you're enjoying the video, if you don't mind subscribing and you don't have to obviously, but if you want to that'd be kind of cool. Um, also, um, Discord, and I got, um, let's see, a Patreon, and member, you want to do all that stuff, get some cool benefits, get craft file access and stuff like that, get early access to the videos, very epic, but, uh, yeah, that's kind of the, the dull point of the thing, make sure you're auto-shredding for all this, make sure you're auto-shredding, it's not a huge deal on a small craft like this, um, but when you get to the, uh, carrier craft, it's pretty important to auto-shred, when you have these kind of, like, big, long, kind of narrow wings, but, um, Last thing is last is you want to kind of lower the uh, the hinge back down into the wing so it's not like fl sitting on top of the wing because that looks really ugly. Then you can see me raising up the wing just kind of fine tuning the design a little bit. And there you go. We can test to see our thing work. And I have it set to 95 degrees as our minimum angle. And then I turn the traverse rate down to 20 degrees a second and then turn damping all the way down. It works very epic. And now action group. So set minimum angle, set maximum angle, and then toggle locked on the hinge. And because the floor is going to be to toggle, pitch, yaw, and roll, so basically activate and deactivate the flight control surfaces. Um, that's going to be useful for in a few different uh, situations, which I'll discuss a little bit later in the video. But uh, now, um, so you kind of have to have your head cannon make it kind of work to pretend like these fuel tanks are, I don't know, sitting um, in the cabin, like above the ceiling or something. But uh, you have to figure out how to get that work. Do a little bit of clipping and then a little ore tank. This one's a lot easier to kind of make your head cannon work for because that's basically just sitting in the nose cone. But basically, you need some fuel tanks in the front. Um, I mean, that back adapter piece, which has liquid fuel in it, which is, is empty. So I don't know, you could finagle things in your brain to make things work. But you need the extra fuel. And we need that ore tank in the front to kind of act as a ballast. Because when it's in, it's kind of, when, when you have the wings kind of folded upward, um, in like your kind of belly flop mode, the thing is pretty back heavy. And see how we're testing, we turn on center mass and center of lift. You can see how it's barely front heavy, um, which is very useful, which is why we have the ore tank in there. Um, so the thing doesn't just fall backwards during um, during its descent phase. Um, now we're going to add some Werner engines. These, uh, in all likelihood, will not be useful because you're probably going to use all of your fuel 
during your your engine burn but if at some point you have if you turn out to have a little bit of extra fuel in your ascent phase after your engine is done uh, burning uh, if you want to cut the engine a little bit sooner I, I guess um, then you could use in the burning engines a burner engine rather can be a little bit helpful during your descent but now it's time to add one of the uh, the hydraulic detacher mat I don't remember what it's called I barely ever use this piece but it has the best ejection force of any decoupler so you kind of need that to kind of get to help help the space plane separate a little bit um I'll help it separate a little better from the um carrier cars so they don't like bonk into each other after separation but that is the space plane done. Now we can get ready to do the carrier aircraft. So go ahead and add some wing pieces. You're gonna want to hit the F key to kind of remove the little move tool, I guess, and then get it um, just squeezed in a little bit there. Now we can go ahead and add a liquid fuel tank. Make sure that is oriented straight up. And you go ahead and add a crew cabin, and then go ahead and add a cockpit. So now, a good rule of thumb is you want the uh, get the move tool, and you want the uh, cockpits of the carrier car to be just a little bit behind that of the space plane. You want to just move them down a little bit, and also you want the, the carrier aircraft fuselage to be just a little bit higher up than the uh, the uh, the space plane. So this is going to fine tune that distance. Going to add um, some fuel tanks there. Uh, make sure to remove the oxidizer. We'll get to that at the end of our build here. Grab a little tail piece, and we get ready to make the aft section of the Eve uh, aircraft. So we want to go ahead and add a, a wing there, and want to rotate it to make a little vertical stabilizer like so. Uh, make that uh, rotated just a little bit uh, down. You'll see me do that in just a second to help add a little bit of angle to it. Very epic. And um, then go ahead and grab another wing piece there or control surface to act as our rudders. Very useful indeed. Now we need our horizontal stabilizer to help pitch uh, the uh, the carrier aircraft or EVE. Um, good thing that this plane doesn't refer to the planet Eve because this plane would not fly on Eve. Well, it'll fly on Eve, but there's no air on Eve, so you wouldn't be able to, know. You wouldn't be able to like, pr propel yourself. I mean, basically, a brick will fly on Eve. It's insane. Um, so now we're going to add one more little tiny piece on the bottom here. Uh, another wing here, just if you're, I mean, that's a, you know, it's on the real thing. So, yeah, I would recommend having a picture of the real, um, system, um, next to you, if you, you know, just in case you want to just change the proportions of my design or whatever, because it's not, it's not perfect, obviously, so. Um, and now we're going to add an aeroplane uh, control surface, basically, and this is our horizontal stabilizer. These things give great control authority, which is why I went with something like this instead of some other type of design, because otherwise you can have some difficulty pulling up, especially when you're at the higher altitudes. So now I'm going to do some uh, some last kind of final things. They're going to go ahead and add the wing, or the actual, like, the main wings to the carrier aircraft. So I want to hope the wings are mounted above the fuselage, so I want to have, don't forget about that, it's a high wing airplane. Go ahead and add that, and then we will add a um, some canards onto the side of the wing there, you'll see in just a second. These will act as our, uh, basically our ailerons. Then we will um, add some of these guys. I, these pylons, I never use them, they're really cool. Um, make sure you enable cross speed on them though, so you actually can pull fuel from the fuel tanks so your engines actually work. Um, so go add these little tiny fill tanks there, don't forget to remove the oxidizer, um, add intakes, and then add some engines to the back. Um, I want Panther engines personally, they probably they turn out to be the best engine. They, they have thrust, they can vector their thrust, so that is helpful a lot too at altitude when the air is a little bit thinner and it's harder to, your control surfaces do less, so. Um, and they're just gonna kind of fine tune that a little bit, then I will um, basically use alt click to copy. Um, the engine because there are four of these on Eve and then um, that will actually basically then it's gonna be housekeeping items and then it'll be uh, then it'll be time to fly so um, there's a few housekeeping items like uh, remember to auto strut everything up very important auto strut or else the thing will flip will flop around we need some landing gear for Eve and then um, actually we also have to set up an action group to uh, make to toggle the um, the Panther is between the uh, wet mode and dry mode, so basically the afterburners. Um, I, I have afterburners on the entire time because there's a lot of fuel in this plane and afterburners make things go faster. It makes you want to set up like roll and pitch and yaw on all the control surfaces. So one control surface isn't doing multiple axes at once, which is why um, I had the, um, I have the action for to toggle the, um, the back fins because um, the control surfaces on the uh, spaceship um, have or space plane have both yaw pitch and roll and if you're trying to do that while you have the mothership on um and you have like the 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 flight control during all three axes it can get a bit wobbly and unstable and buggy and you know welcome to ksb aerodynamics right but now this is basically the final items 
Um, just gonna turn off staging because you don't want to stage those engines. You don't want to drop your engines off. That'd be bad. Want to go ahead and put some Kerbals on here, and then we'll be ready to launch. And I'm launching from the desert side because you know the Virgin Galactic is desert. That's where they actually have New Mexico, right? But here we are. Welcome. Um, this is a pretty cool view of the uh, of the of the plane and the the whole system itself here. So we can get ready. Turn on action group four. Turn on action group five, and we can get rolling. Um, we have the afterburners, we have the um, the control surfaces on the space plane disabled. And then at around 60 meters a second, you can start to pull up nice and gently. If you pull up too aggressively, this thing has a lot of control authority, so you will just snap the tail off. So do be careful on that. And now we can begin our ascent. So um, basically, uh, what I want to do is I'm going to be trying to gain for an altitude of around 12-ish kilometers and just under 300 meters a second to be uh, releasing this, the uh, spaceship. So, and we also want to release directly above the runway. Um, so, um, when the when the plane comes back down from its little journey to space, um, it'll be able to have a nice runway to land on. And then we also want the carrier aircraft to be nice and conveniently placed close to the runway so it can land quickly. So, I'm going to go to 10 kilometers. Then I'm going to level out a little bit to kind of increase our speed. And then after that, once we're sufficiently far away from the airport, we're going to do a big giant 180. We're going to lose a bunch of speed. And that's basically our, another reason why we're flying so far away, so we can get that speed back. And this is why, this is where KSV Aerodynamics is just being an absolute gem. As we try and do these turns at altitude, you can see how just absolute janky it is. It's insane. But eventually, you can see our speed gets really low here. Um, eventually, we can start to fly back towards um, towards the run and get ready for our release. Now, unfortunately, because the way KS works, you can't land the plane and the uh, say space plane uh, both because when you detach, you only control one at a time in the atmosphere. So you can use FMRS if you want to. I'm, a, I'm pretty sure that's broken in 1.12. Or you can just do the good old quick save thing, which is what I'm going to do right here. So I can make a quick save just before release, and then we'll fly the plane, then we'll reload the quick save, and then we'll land the, uh, the, the uh, carrier aircraft. Um, so first thing we do, obviously, is the, is the, is the spaceship, the spaceship 2. Um, or the space plane rather. So here we are, we're right above the runway. I'm going to get the thing turned around, get UI off, and then we're going to be dropping it and then immediately lighting up the engine. There it goes, full power hitting action group four to get the control surfaces turned on. And then you want to get a little bit of air speed and then start pitching up right away. Pitch up, full pitch up. We can take a little bit of effort to get this thing up. You got to really get her up, really, really pitch. You can even mess around a fuel priority to keep the weight in the back if you want, which is what I did. Um, to help it pitch up a little bit more, but there we go. We are now in the ascent uh, phase. You do want to wait before, but oh, there's Gero. That's a really cool shot. Yeah, you want to pull it, wait a little bit before you pull up, um, or else you will actually smash back into the carrier aircraft, which I have done uh, before. Um, so yeah, be careful about that. But now we have cut the engine. We are now coasting on up into space. I like the real thing does. I'm going to start pitching it upside down. You don't want to start pitching upside down right away because it, it adds a lot of drag. So you lose a lot of altitude from your apogee if you do that. But then you want to hit action group three to unlock the um, the turny bit, and then action group one to flip it up, flip it into basically the descent mode. And then once you get around 65 kilometers, I'm going to rotate it back around. And now here's the bit we just have to watch her come down. She is a bit back heavy, so you want to add a little bit of forward control. And then this is another case of being really weird physics. As the G-force is increased, the thing really wants to pitch up. So when you get around to around 25 kilometers, you see it does a big pitch right there. But then once you get below 20, and then their G-forces start to go down, um, then it, it's, it restabilizes. And when you do this about 20 to 10 kilometer phase, you want to be really gentle on the controls. Um, also, counterintuitively, you want to use Q and E, so the roll axes to control yaw. Kind of weird, but... Um, that's just how it works in this configuration. And then at 10 kilometers, I'm going to unlock the uh, the wings. And then at 9 kilometers, I'm going to start pitching forward. Hit action group 2. And then we're going to orient ourselves into glider mode. And then relock the the uh, hinges. It might not lock per relock because of the aerodynamics. But uh, now we're basically glider. And we have to glide back to the, uh, to the runway. And there it is directly ahead of us. Now, this thing is a very good glider. Like, it is a very, very good glider. So... Um, you want to come in around 80 to 70 meters a second on your final approach of this thing. Very hard to do because of how much of a glider it is, because this thing will float down the runway if you don't, if you're not careful, right? So, um, I'm going to basically come do a little bit of a circling pattern into the runway here, maintaining around 100 meters a second during this phase of the approach, and then uh, we're going to go ahead and get it ready to turn inbound to uh, to do the landing here. So, we're going to go ahead and do turn number one coming up right there. 
going to go ahead and drop the landing gear. We obviously have that ski there as the front landing gear. And then we'll turn it in onto our final here. Going a little bit faster on 85 meters a second. And then we'll come in over the runway. Don't at me about this landing. This is mega Ryanair status. But uh, yeah, plop. It is hard to land things in KSP. I know. Epic Ryanair landing. And then here we are. Gonna slow the aircraft down and bring it to a stop. May need to use a little bit of brake, but the ski on the nose ski will help you slow down a lot too. Um, because it is, you know, it's basically the it's a ski, you know, it's not a wheel. So and there we are. Welcome down back to spaceport dirt runway. It's more like a pebbly, rocky runway, but uh quickly before the end of the video, I will show um you landing the Eve space plane. Oh, uh, space plane, wow, carrier plane. Um Obviously, this thing is really just just like landing a plane um, in KSP. Not that, not super hard. Just basically showing this to say, hey, this plane does still work even without the uh, the space plane attached to it. Um, this thing is also because it doesn't have the space plane attached. Um, it, it also has is a really good glider, so you may have to do a little bit of finale, do some turns and stuff to kind of lose speed here. Um, here we go, coming in for a landing, and this thing also wants you want to land this thing around 60, 50 meters a second. So we're coming in a little bit fast here at around 80, but it's a, it's a long runway. Also, kind of flop it onto the ground here, like ooh, ooh yeah, 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 yeah. I tried to redeem myself in the last one. It didn't. It didn't really work. But uh, we're gonna go ahead and bring the thing to a stop right about now, and that will conclude our tutorial on how to make the Virgin Galactic Spaceship 2 and EVE Mothership in Kerbal Space Program. I hope you enjoyed. Big thanks to the members that are on screen right now. Also, Patreons, you guys are on screen right now. And if you want to become either of those, you can hit the join button or there's links in the description. But that's going to be it for me. I'd like to thank you for watching. See you next time. Please hit our comment to the video. And again, thank you for watching. See you next time. And bye.